Docker containers are supposed to be a lightweight solution for deploying applications, but if you aren't careful, you can end up with container images that are 10 or even 40 times larger than necessary. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build smaller containers, and I'll share two techniques that can dramatically reduce the size of your production containers. Hey team, Sid here with DevOps Directive. My goal is to help engineers level up their DevOps and cloud infrastructure skills. On this channel, I create a mixture of informational videos as well as tutorials just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. In order to have actual concrete examples for this demo, I created two simple Hello World applications, one written in Node.js using the HTTP create server method to make a basic web server, and another written in Golang, which uses the net slash HTTP module to do the same. I then created a basic Docker file for each of these to containerize these applications. For Node, we start from the public Node.js base image, copy in the package.json to install any dependencies. We then copy in our application code, and finally specify a command to run the server when the container is started. For Go, the Docker file is similar. We copy in our application source code and build it before running the server in the final step. We build and run these containers. We see them working as expected, returning a hello world message to the browser, but how large are the images? The Go image is 825 megabytes, while the Node.js image weighs in at a whopping 918 megabytes. Considering how little each of these applications is actually doing, this is absolutely crazy. Let's see if we can try to reduce their size. The first and most obvious approach is to use a smaller base image. The base image that I use for my naive Docker files contain a full Debian Linux distribution. If we look on Docker Hub for each of these, we can see that they both contain many different versions and tags available, including a slim version for the Node.js image, which has fewer utilities installed. There's also an Alpine-based version, which uses a lightweight Linux distribution named Alpine to have a much smaller base image. To use these images, we just need to specify the tag in the first line of our Docker file. Now, let's rebuild our images using those smaller base images. As we saw, the initial Node.js Docker file resulted in over 900 megabyte size image. By using the slim image, we reduced the image size to just 142 megabytes. And by transitioning to the Alpine based image, this drops to just 89 megabytes. For Golang, we see a similar story. The initial Docker file was over 800 megabytes. There's no slim based image available, but by using the Alpine-based image, we can get it down to 385 megabytes. While this is certainly much better than before, the Alpine Golang image is still fairly large and brings us to the second technique, which is to use multi-stage builds to avoid including unnecessary build dependencies in the final image. To do this, we need to restructure our Docker file slightly. First, we add a name to the first stage, which I'll call build. The stage looks nearly identical to our previous Docker file, but now there's no command at the end specified. We then add a second stage to the Docker file where we can start from a much smaller base image, which doesn't have any of the build dependencies, such as a vanilla Alpine image. And then we copy our built executable from the build image stage to this stage. When we build this image, the resulting image size is just 20 megabytes. Multi-stage builds allows us to take advantage of having all the necessary build utilities available during the first stage without having them increase the size of our final image that we're going to deploy. With these two tips, I was able to reduce my node image size by a factor of 10 and my Golang image size by a factor of 40. Next time you're working with containers and feel that they are getting a bit heavy, try thinking about whether either of these techniques can help reduce the image size. Also, if you have any other tips of your own for reducing image sizes of containers, leave them in the comment section down below so that we can all learn from your experience. If you want to continue down the Docker rabbit hole, in my last video, I talked about how to debug Docker containers. So I would definitely recommend checking that one out in the card over there, or go to my channel page to see the other content that I've released recently. See you in the next one.